In this two-part series, we're going to look at how to keyframe on the edit page through Inspector, Keyframe Editor, as well as Keyframe Curve Editor. So without further ado, guys, let's go ahead and get started on part one of the series. In the Inspector, any setting that has a diamond-shaped button next to it can be keyframed. This includes settings from the Video tab, the Audio tab, as well as any other tab in the Inspector. Now, the position of the playhead is very important when it comes to keyframing. So now with our playhead positioned at zero, we're gonna go ahead and uh, click on that diamond shaped keyframe button next to crop top and crop bottom to set keyframes. Now, one thing you will notice is that when we set keyframes, they're going to turn red to let us know that they have now been activated. Okay, so now let's move our playhead about one second over to the right. And we're going to, once again, set a keyframe for crop top and crop bottom by clicking on the keyframe button and adjusting the value. But in cases like these, we can actually do this much faster. So all we need to do actually is to simply adjust the value for crop top and crop bottom. This will automatically set a keyframe for us. So when we have a previously established keyframe, now to set a new keyframe, all we need to do is to change the value. It will automatically do this for us instead of us manually clicking on it again. Now let's move the playhead a little bit over to the right. We're going to keyframe the zoom as well as the position setting. Now let's move the playhead over again and then we're going to change the value for both zoom as well as position. This will also automatically set keyframes for us. Now, in case you were wondering where the borders went, well, all we need to do is to check retain image position setting. This will bring our borders back. Okay, now let's come to the end of this clip. We're going to go ahead and the keyframe the opacity setting. And now uh, let's come to the end of this clip. You will notice that the inspector panel has now disappeared. And all we need to do is to move the playhead one frame over to the left. In case you were wondering why this is happening, well, it's because that wasn't technically the last frame of our clip. So if we go ahead and bring in a new clip and put it right after our current clip and move the playhead over one frame, you will see that we're actually looking at the first frame of this new clip. So knowing that, uh, let's uh, just go ahead and come back to the opacity setting and bring it uh, all the way down to zero. At this point, guys, we have now created an animated sequence by simply keyframing through the inspector panel. Now, when we have multiple keyframes for a setting, you're going to notice that right next to the keyframe, we have the right and the left arrows. This will allow us to very quickly navigate to the next or the previous keyframe for that setting. There is another way of doing this, which is to simply click the uh, opening or the closing bracket and uh, this will allow us to very quickly sift through all the keyframes that are present in the clip. And whenever the playhead lands on that keyframe, it's going to show us in the inspector which setting that is for. We also have the ability to change the interpolation for each keyframe. So let's come to our crop top and crop bottom keyframes here. And we're going to right click. Now in the menu, you're going to see that you have the ability to change from linear to ease out. So let's do that. And if we play our clip right now, you're gonna notice that the borders are going to appear more gradually uh, compared to before. So this is a great way to change up the smoothness of the animation. And if we come to the other keyframe and right click, we can also change it uh, from linear to ease in. And if we have a keyframe that's in between keyframes, we can also change it to easing and out. So to do that, let's uh, go ahead and add a third set of keyframes for zoom as well as the position uh, setting. So uh, once that is done, let's come to the keyframes that are in the middle. Now let's right click in the menu. You're gonna see that now we have the ability to change it to easing, ease out, as well as easing and out. So let's do that. And now if we play this part of the clip, you're gonna notice that the transition in the middle is way much smoother as a result. Lastly, to remove a keyframe, we can simply click on that keyframe again to remove it. Or what we can do is to click on the reset buttons that are next to settings. This will remove all the keyframes for that setting. Or we can click on the reset button for that group of settings. Now, when we do that, one thing to keep in mind is that this will also remove everything else that are in that group. So you will notice that retain image position is also gone as a result. So that is uh, something to keep in mind. 
Okay guys, so before we wrap up, there are a couple things that I want to quickly address. So first of all, let's just zoom out a little bit. Then let's bring in a new clip. As we mentioned earlier, the position of the playhead is very crucial when it comes to keyframing. So where our playhead is positioned right now, if we go ahead and make changes in the inspector, setting keyframes and what have you, you're going to see those changes in the viewer. But if you have the other clip uh, selected, now what's going to happen is that the inspector is going to change to all the settings for this other clip and any changes that you make right now uh, is not going to be reflected in the viewer because the playhead itself is not hovering over that clip. So this is just something that uh, you definitely want to watch out for when you are doing keyframing on the edit page. And very similarly, when we have overlapping clips like these in the timeline, by default, when we make changes in the inspector panel, they are going to get applied to the clip that is on the top. Now, if uh, inadvertently you have the clip that's underneath it selected, and now if you make any changes in the inspector panel, these changes will get applied to this other clip instead. So I just want to quickly address these two things. Hope this tutorial helps. And as always, I will see you next time.